Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, listeners. Thanks again for joining us at Fading Memories Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Fink, and today I have the Chief Happiness Officer from Happy Talks, Christian Ross, and we're going to talk about how we can help seniors alleviate isolation through her happy talks program so thanks for joining me christian thanks for having me so You're, glad to be here you too so just so the listeners know i think we've been talking for oh about 45 minutes <laughs> before i hit record we have a lot to chat about it's so much fun but telling stories and communicating is always fun so why don't you give us your background and then tell us a little bit about happy talks yeah, so I have been in real estate for nearly 20 years and um, have just been at the front line and in the living room of families for all those years and noticed particularly in the past five to seven that the family dynamic just looked like it had really shifted. Um, whether I was helping someone with their family member who was downsizing or if they were um you know, basically going to move in with their loved one. I just saw that the communication was different. These lovely cell phone of cell phones of ours have shifted the dynamic with a lot of communication between families. And I was on the phone a lot more with the parents who were going to move out of their home that they've been in for 20, 30, 40 plus years. And um, in my own family, my aunt has MS and I have seen loneliness with her. And I was like, you know what? I can, I can do something about this. I can help people be a little less lonely. My whole career has been connecting people. And uh, so I went to a program at Atlanta Tech Village to kind of go through my, my idea and see if it could be a business. And uh, we started from there. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about Happy Talks because it's not yeah. an app. It's not an app. Like yes. So the, the great thing is with Happy Talks, our whole goal, and you did ask me that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> with Happy Talks, we provide social phone calls for older adults. So a lot of times people are like, what do you mean social phone calls? And we say, you know, a lot of times when the daughter or the son or the doctor's calling, they're saying, have you taken your prescription? Have you done this? Have you gone for a walk? We don't do any of that. We are literally talking just to socialize, just to lift their spirits, help them feel seen, help them feel heard. And then through our platform, it's all HIPAA uh, compliant. We report back to the families and if they have opted in to the care providers so that they know that their loved ones have socialized, when they've done that, who they've talked to, which are our buddies and they're all background checked. Um, and we, our whole goal is again, that they're just feeling seen. So the great thing is after the conversations every month, they get a, ha they get happy mail. So a handwritten note to them, just again, kind of anchoring onto a conversation that they said before. And then afterwards, every quarter, they get a happy box filled with delightful things that we've again, talked about and things that we think will make them smile. So each box is customized. It's not like a pre-packaged Correct. They're all customized to them each quarter. Fun. Yeah. And we're on a membership plan. So families, uh, we have three memberships. They range from $49 to 149 a month. And that includes one, two, or three calls per week, including the happy mail and the happy boxes. So our whole goal was to make it accessible so that even if someone wanted to, you know, get a membership for someone for three months after surgery, they could do that. You know, there's no commitment and know that their loved one would get a call every week, happy mail each month, and a box. Awesome. So why do you feel or why is it important to have these kind of phone calls? Can't they just go talk to their neighbors? <laughs> they can. They definitely can. I think that I, I say this a lot, but I feel like at certain points in people's lives, there's there's more subtraction than addition. And, and it's, it's unfortunate, but it's true. They're losing their friend of 40 years, 30 years. Um, and so we just want to help be another friend for them that they know is trusted that when they're getting on the phone, it's not a spammer. It's someone who actually like knows about them, wants to talk to them, is engaged, is listening. So our goal is to really be a supplement 
of care for the family and to know that their loved one is is just being heard. Makes sense. And what kind of, um, what are you finding people are like most interested in talking about? Just, are they just shooting the breeze like we did for 45 minutes talking about my, my history of wedding photography? I don't even know how we got on that topic. <laughs> I was telling Kristen all about some of my wedding horror brides back in the day. <laughs> but no, that's what we talk about. We, we, we'll talk about sometimes their previous work experience, or we'll talk about um, their, their children, their grandchildren, um, important dates that are, that are coming up that are, that are important to them that they're like, you know, this was my anniversary. I lost my husband X amount of years ago, but like, I'm, you know, now I'm at a place where this is, this is a, it's, it's a time of memory versus grief for me, you know, like those type of conversations. And then there's the bachelor. We have lots of bachelor conversations. We have lots of, uh, lots of golden bachelor conversations on that was on always the news, always the weather. Um, and I think one thing that's important for people to know is that when it comes to our buddies, they completely understand that whatever that person's opinion is of whatever it is they're talking about, that is their opinion. And it's not their right to impede on that opinion. Their, their whole goal is to listen. And if they feel uncomfortable with anything, we call them conversation scoops. Hey, they were talking about something with the war. Then you can say, Hey, what's the war that you remember the most from when you were younger and you're taking them somewhere else, but they're still able to talk, talk about a memory and, uh, and reminisce. That's actually a good diversion skill. Most of us that have cared for somebody with some form of dementia generally learn because, you know, they get into loops or they tell the same story over and over to the point where you want to bang your head on the wall. Um, I was going to ask, oh, uh, you were talking about if you have a difference of opinion, especially since you mentioned the news, we all know what the news seems to be talking about. I read where if you have conversations emphasis on the word conversation, somebody who has different opinions than yourself is mm -hmm. actually very beneficial to your brain health. Yeah. And I don't know if that's because you have to listen and be accepting and you're like using different skills that maybe we're yeah. not using as much as we should. But I thought it was very interesting. We have um, some really good friends who are Catholic. So they have they have some beliefs that don't align with mine, but we have had some pretty interesting conversations on abortion and um, capital punishment. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we kind of get right up to the line and then we talk about the dogs, you know, it's yeah. like, we kind of <laughs> seem to like instinctively know when, okay, we've had enough of this difficult topic because yeah. I understand their beliefs. I don't disagree with them. They're just not the same as mine. And, you know, you learn some things, you get some different perspectives. And I guess it's good for your brain because if you're smart, like they had a, a distant family member who uh, was pregnant with a wanted child, uh, learned that the child had like no, no chance of survival past, you know, a few days after birth. Of course, the medical profession said, nah, you should terminate. That didn't, that didn't align with her beliefs. And I was just impressed at how strong this young woman was because the baby was born and he wasn't going to survive. And they donate, <clears throat> excuse me, they donated all of his organs to other people. And I thought, wow, you know, if that doesn't make you think yeah. about things, it's like, huh, okay, well, I couldn't do that. Other people couldn't do that. Still think we need to have choices and options. This is a wholly totally different topic than normal for me. <laughs> But I think because you're thinking about other perspectives, I think that's why yeah. it's good for your brain. So that's where I was going with that. I know that sounded like, oh boy, left turn. <laughs> so we're going to turn this one off today. I, I um, completely see that though. I mean, it's like, you know, they always say it's kind of like the, the pistons <laughs> kind of firing off. I mean, it really is. It's like when you're taking the, the opportunity to really listen to someone and then, you know, and you're not you're not responding just to respond, but you're truly taking into account what they're doing. Like I can completely see, I'm not a doctor. My MD, <laughs> that isn't on either. But I could definitely see that correlation for sure. And it just, you know, I, I gained a lot of empathy for her and a lot of respect. And I'm like, you know, man, it'd be, be nice if more people could do that. You know, unfortunately yeah. things do happen, but again, 
it doesn't align with I think we should have choices because I don't think people should be forced into things. But again, that's a whole other that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> that's not me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the closest to political as I've gotten in a very long time. So do you have some interesting stories? We're gonna veer way off of my stories now. <laughs> Do you have like some interesting case stories that you can share with the listeners on like people that have really benefited from these conversations? And I don't know if we can explain how that's neither one of us are wearing our MD hats today. <laughs> yeah, I think on the on the one side, on our buddy side, they're definitely impacted. I think a lot of people are always like, oh, the older adults, like they're the ones getting all the benefit. And it's really not. It's also our buddies because we have somebody's that they miss their grandparents. Like that's, that's why they wanted to work with us because they're like, I miss talking to my grandmother or my grandfather. Oh, their stories. And, and um, so I think the learning on that side, as well as too, I feel like they realize how in the real world where they're at, how they can be just better humans to the people who they see in the street that may be older adults or, or starting conversations or if they kind of identify maybe someone that has some loneliness. So I think on the buddy side, it's it's definitely important for me to note that they see a benefit too, which I love. Uh, on the older adult side, they, it, I have a few stories. So one is uh, we have, what was it? It was about cars. The fact that cars, when I think I told you, but uh, cars, when they came out, they were all black. Well, mm -hmm. None of us knew that. <laughs> None of the buddies knew that. So we were like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. But he was telling us, one of our members was just telling us, you know, like, oh, it's amazing. Like, you know, when I got my first green car. And so the buddy was like, well, I understand it was green. Like, what, what made you so excited about the color? And he was like, oh, well, all the cars were black before then. And so she's like, wait a minute, what? tell me more. And so then they started talking about that or like, and, and so I, I feel like that intergenerational um, link is something that we thought we would see, but we really enjoy seeing. And then we had another um, gentleman who was in palliative care when he started with us. And now he's been with us for two years, um, going on two years in about a month. Um, and we didn't know that. So we always ask families, we have an information form. We always ask families like, oh, you know, is there anything we should know about their health? Like, because sometimes people take medicine at a certain time of day and they get sleepy. So then let's not have the calls at sleepy time. You know, <laughs> like, let's make sure we're doing them two hours before they take the medicine. Um, but so we didn't know that and just happened to be, I was at um, an event and a healthcare, a nurse in a healthcare system I was like, oh, I'm with Happy Talks. And she said, oh, I know who you are. And I was like, you do? <laughs> <laughs> and and come to find out, it was he was in her palliative care program. And so she knew about us because the daughter was raving. And I was like, well, that's amazing to know. So just just knowing that. And, and we have other uh, members who have said, the, the family members have just said, you know, mom looks forward to the calls. She's... Um, always excited and we make sure that we're by her so we can give her the phone because the other thing is a lot of people are like oh well if my loved one's in a community or if my loved one is um you know aging in place at home we have plenty of people who are living with their loved ones and they have a membership because it's still like you're giving them a friend they may have you know, not the best decreased mobility, not the best mobility or something like that, where they can't get out to these groups that are having, you know, dates at the museum and different things. So our whole goal is to just bring socialization to older adults, wherever they are, no apps, they can have a landline phone, we are calling them. And on the security side, um, all of our calls are masked. So our buddies never see the loved one's last name and they never see their phone number. All they do is go into our platform, hit a button and connect with the person. So they only see their first name and really brief bio notes like, oh, they're a vegetarian. They like share, um, <laughs> you know, they lived in Europe. <laughs> That's an interesting combination. <laughs> <laughs> that is an interesting combo. Now, are any of these buddies trained to maybe have conversations with people in like mid-stage dementia? 
Because my so mom I, loved to sit around and shoot the breeze. I'm sure you're shocked to hear that after us. We've we've done <laughs> nothing but shoot the breeze. <laughs> well, right now we have we have had it where we've been at mild cognitive impairment, but we've had our uh, chief nursing officer now for she'll be going on about a year. So now we are able to take a further diagnosis, which we're excited about. We just we just didn't want to do that and upset anyone without knowing that we had a medical provider who was on our staff. Yeah, it's a little bit, you have to learn a few other techniques so that, you know, one of the things that was huge when I first started becoming responsible for my mom, which was in 2017, it's like, well, you have to be in their reality. Nobody freaking told me what that meant. Mm -hmm. So frustrating. And I've learned various ways of determining their reality or entering their reality. Really wish I'd learned that when mom was still alive and, you know, not arguing, which you guys probably don't do anyway, cause you're not trying to change people's opinions. Yeah. Um, but I can see like, I, my mom would have loved those calls because like I said, that's all she wanted to do. Sit around and shoot the breeze. Yeah. And, and just talk. And that's, that's the thing too. It's like, I, I think the other thing for people to just realize is that, you know, if your loved one is an older adult and they are lonely, they're experiencing not really socializing. They have a 50% risk, higher risk of having early onset dementia. So as much as we look at it as being supplemented care, we also hope that, you know, eventually we can have enough case studies to show that we're preventive. We would love that because people need to social, like community is health. Connection is health. Yeah, that's really interesting. And so, you know, where I do a lot of stuff with the Alzheimer's Association and they're very excited to be able to say, we're in the era of treatments now. And now that we've got technically three drugs, but I guess they've kind of discontinued the first one that was approved like two years ago, I think, two or three. We've got Lakembi and we've got Denanamab. I really wish they'd come up with easier to pronounce words. And now that they've got those, they're like, oh, but on the other hand, we're finding that lifestyle choices are really important to, you know, prevent dementias and cancers and, you know, to slow the progression. If you already have dementia, it's like you spend a gazillion dollars to go with these drugs and this is what you're <laughs> telling <laughs> us now. <laughs> like, okay, pretty sure you could have come up with that advice much cheaper. But I've talked to neurologists that really believe that true treatment for dementias is going to be like a cocktail of drugs and lifestyle choices and all this other stuff. So I can kind of see it coalescing together, but it's just interesting that, you know, socializing is so very, very important. And, you know, it's one of the reasons I make sure to take the golden retriever to the dog park. Yeah. She's not listening to me. I mean, there's days she when it's like, too. <laughs> Oh, so Lord, she needs a worse night. She's extremely social. I'm like, Ugh, looking at the clock, looking at the to-do list. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go. Life will be fine. And I very rarely regret it. There are times, you know, I have to learn how not to disagree with people when their political opinions are different than mine. <laughs> Try to steer them into some maybe like a little research that might help inform them differently. But other than that, <laughs> generally it's, you know, we talk about the dogs and what's going on and it's just easy breezy. And yeah, it's kind of it, fun. It, it's interesting too, because for us, like at the same time that we realize connection is so important, we have a new campaign that we're starting called connect and protect. And I don't think it'll really be a campaign. I think it's just going to be a cornerstone of what we do, just seeing how prevalent fraud is. And the fact that, um, you know, older Americans are getting defrauded like 3.1 billion last year, the FBI said, that's disgusting. And I just went to a grocery store. Um, I'm so glad like Publix, I don't think you have them in California. No, um, we don't. But Publix, uh, they had these signs up and they were like at the gift cards section all around. And I was like, now, personally, this should probably be like bright yellow. But I mean, this is a start. <laughs> it just said if you're here and someone told you to order, it could be a scam. And it has different information. And I was so glad to see that because uh, my mom, she's actually an auditor. And I'll never forget as a kid going into the credit union where she was an auditor at and she would teach them training all the time. What Back then it was watch out for Western Union. If someone comes in and says, I'm gonna send a Western Union and it's not to someone they know, it's probably a scam. And it was crazy because 
She would go in, learn about someone losing part of their life savings. And she would always say like, we, we talked about this. We said, these are the signs. She put like little posters up. But the reality is when people are just in the moment talking with something like they're not thinking of those protocols to put in place. So for us, it's really like, what can we help share with families to tell uh, their loved ones, like, hey, watch out for these area codes. What did, what did the FTC said? It was like the the hang up in the one uh, one ring for us, mm. where it's like, oh, then you call back and, you know, things like that. And we always say, you know, use a safe word with your family because the reality is if someone's calling and now we have the rise of AI and all these different things that can manipulate voices, manipulate videos, how do I know it's not my grandson? Well, if the family has, you know, the word um, biscuit, <laughs> you know, the word biscuit, then if, if your grandson does, if you're like, hey, Jack, what's our family word? And they don't say it, then you hang up and then you call your grandson back at the number you know, but you do not call that number back that called you because it could still be a spoof. There's just so many ways to defraud now that's so scary. So yeah, we're definitely making sure to just help take on that charge with security as well. Just for those people who are listening, I don't got no money because there's <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of hours of my voice on the internet. It would be so easy to do whatever they wanted. I could say whatever they wanted very easily. So there's no, no benefit to doing that to you spammers that are listening. <laughs> You're like, go yeah. somewhere else. Go yeah, somewhere. just can, skip right over, you know, go to Joe Rogan. He's got money. But I actually read an article. This is based on what you were talking about, the scamming. Is a financial reporter got scammed 50 grand. I saw she, that. Isn't and that she's scary? Like, I should have known better. She's like, I should have. But it's like when they get you in that when you start thinking about the fact that someone could have access to your accounts, it's like a little piece of your brain just floats away. Cause you're like, let me handle this right now. I saw that. Yeah. That was, that was a terrifying article. I'm really glad I have my iPhone set on block unknown callers. It's like, I hate it okay. when I'm waiting for the doctor's office or somebody to call and I got to undo that. Cause man, the spam calls start happening. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, and it's wild because even, um, this was years ago, but I, started just using a whole different number because it was just too many calls. I've yeah. Seen. I actually disconnected our home phone the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, our landline. Cause one, we had two, one for my business, one for the house and 90% of the world called my husband on his cell phone or even more. Um, I did not want to give out my cell phone number because I didn't want to be like accessible all the time. Yeah. Gave that up. <laughs> Still not accessible all the time because if you're not on my contact list, it's going to go to voicemail. But it was expensive. I'm like, why am I paying all this money to basically pay? I'm paying all this money to get spam calls. This is stupid. Right. So I'm glad there's better technology. And since we're talking about it, we're a little bit off topic. I'm going to remind the listeners of the um, episode I did with the um, creator of IMP. It is a landline based system that blocks a hundred percent of unknown uh, phone calls. It's a very cool system. Go back oh. in the feed. I think that was back in 2023. So yeah. Um, and it's a really inexpensive device and a service that it's very cool. So it's imp.com or join imp.com. I'll put it in the show notes. It used to be in the show notes back when they were a sponsor, but yeah, it's, it's a huge problem. So I'm wondering if just knowing that nice people call helps them not want to talk to spammers as much. I that, would hope. That's our goal. That's our goal too. It's like, you know, we're, we're almost like, you know, how they used to say like appointment TV. Um, we feel like we're, we're a phone appointment, you know, in a, but in a good way, we're like a phone calendar appointment of, Tuesday at 4 p.m. We always call from the same number. So, um, you know, they know that when that call is coming through at that time, that's us. And you know, we understand sometimes people just don't hear their phone. So we always, you know, wait five minutes to another call. So we, we try to call two or three times and then we let the family know if we were unable to connect and we reschedule. So no one ever loses their calls. We're, we're not in the business of charging people for calls that don't happen. It makes sense. And I think what's interesting is because they're talking to 
a non-family member. Now it's giving them something to discuss with the family. Like it, you were saying, you've got exactly. people that live with their older adults. You know, after a while, you've heard the same stories. Oh, God, I don't want to hear the story. Even if they don't have dementia, you know, people have a tendency to relive some of their best memories. and Oh, yeah. Or the, the most impactful memories, maybe. And you're like, I, I really don't need to hear about that war story again. Dad, thank you so much. Um, you know, it reminds me of that when I was like a third grader, second or third grader, I was nine. My great grandmother was the oldest of 14 kids. They traveled across the United States in a covered wagon. They lived in a dugout. Christian and I are the same age. So this was at the time when Little House on the Prairie was real popular. And it makes me sad sometimes to think that unfortunately at nine, I was not with it enough to understand that I would appreciate those stories as an adult. Yeah. You know, live and learn. But, you know, I did capture stories from my paternal grandmother before she died on my phone. I have a, um, a lapel mic that plugs into the phone jack and you can, I just clipped it to her, her shirt and asked her, asked her questions about different aspects of my dad's life. Cause my dad was gone at that time. And oh. now his middle brother is gone. Um, it's kind of, I feel bad for the youngest one. I'm, I asked my, like the uncle that is, is, was the youngest. I'm like, what's it like to be the last man standing? And he's like, kind of weird. And I'm like, well, you got to hang in there a little longer than these other two did. And he goes, well, I got to get to, I think it was 82 to uh, break even on social security. And we were in the church for my, my uncle's service. And I almost laughed like a hyena in the <laughs> middle of church because I was like, if that is not indicative of my family, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm like, well, you don't want to just break even, man. You gotta, you gotta make sure. Yeah, go beyond. <laughs> exactly, man. We've all earned that. It's just like, I just, oh, it was like, I wish he wasn't in Idaho half the years. In Idaho, half the year, Palm Springs the other half. So he's not close. I bet you Idaho's. I bet you Idaho and Palm Springs are almost the same distance from us. Now I'm gonna have to Google that. But it's like, you know, it's like, dang, I need to see these people more often because that's just. Like that whole conversation could have just, or that one comment could have launched into a whole conversation about our family and money and you know, how we're all frugal to a fault. <laughs> yeah, those, I mean, those conversations, it's so interesting too, when we hear from a family member who's heard all the stories and then yeah. there's one they must not have heard. And so they read our notes and they're like, because we're after each call, they can, they can always log into the platform, see what buddy they talk to, everything. But after each call, just to make it easy, we send them a text message so that they know. Um, but it's always interesting when that one family member just says, wait a minute, what? I haven't heard that story. And we're like, what? We got a new story. <laughs> so it, it does exactly what you said, where it allows another opportunity for families to connect and to say, hey, I talked to my friend today. And then they're talking to their family member about what we talked about. And so it's our, our, our whole goal is to just, just connection all the way around with them, with their family, and that their family knows that if they have something that maybe has changed health wise or changed family wise, um, or if there's like, hey, make sure maybe something happened, don't bring that up. Don't bring <laughs> XYZ up. We know. And we're empowered to know that so that we can make sure we just have positive conversations and deliver joy every single time. I can just picture, it, you know, adult daughters showing up at home, mom's there doing mom stuff and be like, <laughs> doing mom what stuff. do I hear about so-and-so and such-and-so? And such? <laughs> just <laughs> like, I'm just, I can just so vividly picture that conversation when some story pops out that they either totally don't remember or truly never heard because, you know, there's got to be a lot of those in families. Yeah. And I, I think there are. And that's why I'm so excited. Like right now we're, we're in our third year of, of business and um, we're excited that like, yes, we've delivered hundreds of phone calls and we have customers across the country. Like that's the other thing too, because of the phone, we can talk to people anywhere. So um Interestingly, we had someone who contacted us from the Middle East who said, my 
dad went to school, went to grad school in the United States. My mother does not speak English. My father always watches English news, English TV shows. Um, I am going back to grad school. My dad needs someone to talk to because my brother and my younger brother and sister won't call him the way I call him. So that was interesting for us to even get, like we never even thought about kind of that use case of someone who's in a family who they, they speak different languages, but that one like wants a tie to the English language that they in the country where it's not the main language and their family doesn't speak it. So um, yeah, it's, I, I feel like we're going to keep hearing different use cases as we, as we get older. <laughs> Yeah, that is an interesting one. And it's also excellent for that dad's brain health because he's utilizing a second language and that's that's not easy. No. <laughs> I'm lucky easy. I speak English well. <laughs> <laughs> there are sometimes, days. Sometimes yeah. I'm well. <laughs> sometimes my tongue works well and other days it's like, oh, give it up. <laughs> <laughs> so... I guess, do you have any, let's, I don't know what I want to ask you. See, like I was, I was all trying to talk nice and my brain just went on, just went on a break. I'm trying to talk nice. <laughs> trying to make sure I didn't say um and duh and all that stuff that's so annoying to listen to. So we're branching into people with mild cognitive impairment, possibly mid-stage dementias. Yeah, we've Maybe. been at mild, we've been at MCI. So really that mid-stages would be where we would, where we'd be going to. And, and I, I can really see that as beneficial for a lot of reasons. Just, just like I said, my mom would have loved it. My grandmother would have loved it, but it would have been hard to talk to her at the end. Cause like I said, she got really hard of hearing, but for many years. So my paternal grandfather died at the end of 97 and she died in 2021. That's a long time to be without your spouse. That's a long time. And that's the other thing too, is that like, Ah, uh, just like when the, the adult children are calling us and telling us, you know, mine, of course, they're, they're grieving. They just lost a parent. Um, but I think it's beautiful that they are looking out for, hey, I know I'm busy at work. I know I have the kids. I know I have these volunteer responsibilities. I know I have all these things I need to check off every day, but I want to make sure mom is okay. I want to make sure dad is okay because, you know, that, that at least they're having someone else that they can talk to regularly. Because they know how it is. Someone, they lost 65, 65 years. You know, we have one person that called us and was like, hey, just lost uh, my mom. And that was my dad's wife for 60 years. I mean, that's just, it's painful to hear, but it's just the reality because we know we're all, we're all not going to be here forever. Um, as much as we may wish we were, but <laughs> we're not going to be here. So, you know, if, if, if you can just help, Hey, how do I help ease the burden of grief? And we have webinars. Um, and actually one of our next, one of our upcoming ones is really just going to be an open time for people to talk about their loved ones. Because we understand like people just want to talk. So if you want to come and talk about your husband for 45 years, we're again in the, in the protect part of our, our connected protect, we're saying no last names no whatever, but feel free to share about Bob. Feel free to share about Michael, but we um, we definitely want to make sure the room has privacy. And is that a Zoom call or just a like large conference call on the phone? Like trying to think of the old technology. <laughs> yeah, we we do. Um, we actually do. We use Luma, so it's basically like Zoom and just clicks. Yeah, so they can just click and just join the video call. Keep their camera on or off. That's really cool. So how often do you do workshops? Um, every other month. So people should definitely check out their website for when those are coming up because that's, that sounds really good. So do you have like a last story you want to leave the listeners with before I let you go? Like mm -hmm. I said, we've all, we talked for 45 minutes before we started recording. So. <laughs> um, I, I think the, the biggest thing is, is that, I just implore people to really just pay attention um, because I think it's really easy to go to mom's house, go to dad's house, talk to him on the phone and talk briefly, being distracted, but really just like make sure at least once a week you're really dialing in, whether it's 10 minutes, five minutes, whatever, because our calls that we provide are 15 minutes. 
And we talk about so much stuff in 15 minutes. Like they've told me 22 stories. <laughs> <laughs> so they've told us 22 stories. So I would say just really uh, look so that that way, you know, how you're always giving people the tools to know what to do in regards to dementia, like make sure that you're paying attention so you can start seeing it if there are any signs or if you see things that your loved one is experiencing loneliness, how, what can you do either in your direct community or online um, or call us? Like what can you do to help your loved one just feel connected and, and feel seen and continue to feel their purpose? That makes sense. Well, this has been a lot of fun, both on and offline. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get to South Carolina so we could go have a meal and and some iced tea and not worry about having to record and just shoot Let's the breeze like mom Let's wanted. Do it. To. Let's do it. <laughs> well, I am going to New Jersey at the end of September, but that's not that close. Oh yeah. Sorry. Well, but once that's... the speak once the speaking career kits kicked into high gear, then I'll probably be all over the place. That'll be so much fun. That things to look fun. forward to yes i have a lot of fun on zoom i can and i do have a lot of fun when i when i do my programs for the alzheimer's association so looking forward to expanding on that i'm working yes. on it and i definitely want to talk to you about those programs too so okay dokey well thank you so much i hope you guys definitely take advantage of happy talks because i've had so many conversations today with just two people it's been great and Yay. it's just Monday oh. for me. So, <laughs> and if I can share quickly, we are at happytalks.com and uh, we're on social at our happy talks. Oh, you are happy talks. So you can find us there and um, you can always call us. We have a 24 seven answering service at 47068 happy. Awesome. I'll make sure all that is in the show notes. Like usual, usually there's not phone numbers, but I'll put the phone number in there <laughs> and then you guys don't have to even Google anything or try to remember anything. You could just click the hot link and go. And I'm not sure the phone number will be a hot link though, but you guys get it. It's okay. You just go to the website. You'll find us. Yeah. The website will be hot link. That's easy. So I appreciate this. I'm excited that you turned your real estate experiences into something that benefits older adults. That's, that's not quite the pivot that most people would think about, <laughs> but Hey, you know, Glad somebody did it. And you're like, we're here. <laughs> My husband's been in real estate 20 years, so I can relate to some of those stories that you've heard and and how how this pivot happened, but he, he didn't pivot that way. So <laughs> <laughs> glad you guys did. So thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.